Hey guys, Alex here from Trade Mate Sports. Today I'm going to be taking you through our 2020 results in every single sport, our overall results, and also how we went in each sport in terms of recommended leagues or popular leagues and unrecommended leagues. So the smaller leagues that we don't really recommend people betting on due to limitations and efficiencies and all that kind of stuff. So before I get into it, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you get a notification every time we post a video like this. It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. So before I get into the results, I'll just go through some of the limitations of the data we're gonna to present to you today. There's a chance that some of the data is duplicated. So uh, obviously I have a wide range of customers. So, you know, they could be both using Univet or Bet365 and placing the exact same bet themselves. So a lot of the trades will be duplicated, but not much of them considering that our audience is so geographically diverse so not everyone uses the same bookmakers um, but yeah it definitely will impact the validity of the data uh, thirdly uh, is customers can log their own bets within the data in the game center so um, you know they could be logging a bet that wins big or loses big whatever uh, that TradeMate didn't even recommend and that can skew the data a little bit very very rare and it's it's not even something you we should really be taking into consideration but just want to be completely honest that it can happen um, and fourth is the sample sizes of some of the data I'll go through it more in depth but when we're looking at sample sizes that are quite low I just don't think we should even be uh, be looking at them and judging the the sport or the league too uh yeah too much so anyway we'll go through some of the the key findings now some of the things we'll be looking at today in terms of each sport will be number of trades on each sport uh the flat roi which is a really good way of measuring how big your edge is because if you're just measuring the flat staking roi it doesn't take into account how successful your staking strategy is and just sees exactly how good or how big or small your edges so that's why we look at the flat roi we'll look at the actual roi which is with the kelly staking uh, implemented uh, the turnover the actual profit um, and then the average edge placed and the average closing edge okay so we'll get up the results of uh, trademate results 2020 so overall there were 1,214,000 bets placed an actual ROI of 3.02% and turnover of 69 million, actual profit 2 million. So you can also see that we've broken that up into recommended leagues and non-recommended leagues. So you can have a look at the difference in ROIs there and some of the turnover and actual profit differences. I think overall our average, our average ROI uh, since we began is two, around 2.6% eight or something like that at the moment so overall to be able to achieve a 3.02 percent roi across all the sports i think is uh is a really good result for 2020 and in a pretty unpredictable year so yeah they're the results for for 2020 it doesn't really tell you much at all because that's kind of everything thrown together uh with certain sports having uh more effect than others due to the number of trades so yeah, you can't really get much from this. I think it's better if we just look at each sport in terms of recommended leagues and unrecommended leagues. And we'll go through that now. So let's kick things off looking at soccer, which is kind of the bread and butter of trade, mate, or you, people might want to call it football. Um, and yeah, the results have always been very, very stable with soccer. And as you can see in kind of both situations here on recommended and non-recommended leagues, we have a situation where the the flat ROI has been good, which shows that we have an edge. But then secondly, uh, it shows that the actual ROI, which is implementing the Kelly staking, has taken that edge and exceeded it even further with a successful staking strategy. So that looks really good. Um, the closing edges are nice, 2.87 and 3.95%. 
Um, yeah, I don't think there's much more to say. Obviously, the number of trades is the highest out of all of our sports. It's the most popular sport. I'd probably say if you are a TradeMate user or if you um, try it out one day, I'd say something around the 60% mark of trades will be all on, on soccer or football. So that's why the trade count is so high. So yeah, uh, that's the results for soccer in 2020. So moving on to tennis 2020 results, just a bit of uh, information regarding recommended, non-recommended leagues. So recommended leagues is just the Grand Slams. So there weren't, uh, not all the Grand Slams were played this year, I believe. So there wouldn't be as many trades, just the 12,700. But yeah, so that's just your US Open, Wimbledon, French Open, and also the Aussie Open. Non-recommended non leagues is everything else. So good to have that information when we look at this stuff. I think the most interesting thing here is some great ROI. It's like a 5.74% ROI in the Grand Slams is bloody good. Um, and it's a little bit trickier in the non-recommended leagues. I think mostly because there's, it's not the most efficient market, just talking to certain people in the tennis industry, to tennis betting industry. Um, it seems that it's not the most efficient market. So when you are using TradeMate, you want to be using a, uh, or at least presetting a higher minimum edge, just a little FYI for people. And you can kind of see that uh, that that in the, the difference between the average edge place and the average closing edge. So in both cases, there's almost a, or there is a 2.2% difference in non-recommended leagues. Um, and there's nearly that in, a, in the recommended leagues too. So because there's not as much liquidity around, especially non-recommended leagues, like your ITF tournaments and stuff like that, uh, even in like WTAs and so, even some cases ATP, um, you can have pretty big swings. So you wanna be betting reasonably close to kickoff or tip off, whatever it's called in tennis. Um, and yeah, so I think overall, just make sure in tennis that you are setting a higher minimum edge there. Um, and as you can see, if you do that, I think your uh, your results will, will be quite nice. Basketball results for 2020, I think it's pretty similar to soccer. It's a pretty strong sport for us. Um, lots of trades, like huge sample sizes, which is good. Um, so 50,000 trades on the, so recommended leagues is NBA and also the Euro League. So as you can see here, uh, yeah, pretty similar results to, to soccer before, like a strong, a strong flat ROI, and that's just been enhanced by the Kelly staking with the actual ROI. Um, and yeah, you can kind of see, this will probably be a, a pretty uh, similar theme for all non-recommended results, uh, is that the closing edge and the edge place will have a pretty variant, uh, pretty big difference, sorry, with... Um, just because there's you know less liquidity in these leagues and you know when someone puts down a big bet it can swing your bet can swing out of your favor and become a negative ev bet but yeah here are the results for for basketball in 2020 pretty strong uh yeah i would say this it's the second most popular sport in terms of trades place so some huge samples there nearly 200,000 on non-recommended leagues so that's pretty impressive American football. Now, one of the sports has probably been hampered a little bit by COVID and, um, yeah, not that many trades. I mean, 12 or well, nearly 13,000 and then 7,000 on non-recommended leagues. Most people would probably think it's a pretty decent sample size, which it is, but it's, you know, not as big as some of the other sports. Um, I think the most, so recommended leagues is NFL, uh, just the NFL. So you can basically write NFL instead of recommended leagues here. Very, very interesting results, I think, here. You can see that we, with the flat ROI, you can see that we do have a, a an edge there, but um, which is converted into an even bigger edge uh, once you implement Kelly staking. But yeah, it's 0.6%, it's, it's not not something to get too too excited about. So I think with the um, with American football, when using TradeMate, it's probably another good scenario like tennis, where you maybe want to be taking a higher minimum edge um, yeah, just because it seems that, yeah, our edge isn't as strong as it could be. I know it's not the biggest, it's, you know, it's a decent sample size though. So, um, yeah, maybe something that you could look at if you are a user going to the big data tool, do a few simulations and see how we perform when people are taking a, a bigger edge. Like even, even though our average edge place is 3.78%, 
it still may or still turns out to be a, a 0.6% flat ROI. So, um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's something you can look at. I wouldn't spend too much time looking at it because they're still pretty good results with an actual ROI of 2.52%. So, yeah, maybe something you can look at. And then if you look at the non-recommended leagues, that's mostly like your college football and stuff like that. They're, uh, they're quite strong. Baseball results, pretty similar outlook as uh, American football. So bigger samples, which is good. But the main problem would be the, the flat ROI. It's a little bit bigger than the flat ROI for American football. But uh, it's still nothing to get too excited about at 0.84%. And not the jump that you would want with the Kelly staking to 1.98% ROI. Um, so yeah, maybe another another sport you can maybe take a uh, deeper look at and see if a higher minimum edge would be worth the, the, the loss of trades to get more value. So yeah, definitely something to look at there. But yeah, some bigger bigger sample sizes there, which is nice. Um, and yeah, if I haven't already said, recommended leagues would just be ML the MLB Major League Baseball. Ice hockey, another another strong sport I'd say for for trade made in 2020 and in general. Um, not too much interesting stuff to look at here. If I had to uh, have a look though, non recommended leagues got 120 thousand bets, which is uh, very interesting. Um, and FYI, recommended leagues is just the NHL. So non-recommended leagues is everything else. Um, but yeah, an interesting relationship here between the flat ROI and the actual ROI. So if you just put you know $1 on every bet or $10 on every single bet, you would have gotten a better ROI. I'm not quite sure why that would be, as you've probably seen with the data so far. And as we go along, normally the Kelly staking ROI is bigger than the, the flat ROI. But yeah, just one of those situations where flat staking would have worked out better. I wouldn't look into it too much. I think Kelly is clearly, when you look at all the data and take everything into account, it's clearly the better staking strategy um, for TradeMate users. So yeah, but an interesting thing. I think another interesting thing is the average closing edge for the NHL. So 4.16% is, is pretty bloody big especially when you look at uh, you're talking about a major league like the NHL so um, yeah great signs for for trade mate users and a and a, an ROI of 3.01 percent is nothing that uh, yeah shouldn't be laughed at all right moving away from the US sports now and into rugby union and rugby league we'll go through rugby union first um, I think this is where it starts to get a little bit troubling in terms of sample sizes so I think when you when you're using something like TradeMate and you have the ability to to look at the whole of 2020 and see you know samples we're talking you know hundreds of thousands of bits um, those kind of those samples are so much more reliable than looking at a rugby union results where we're looking at samples of 5,000 and 6,000 good samples but not just not 100% accurate so um, I think this is the only I'm just looking through the results quickly here it's it's kind of the only big loss for for 2020 was rugby union recommended league. So a, a flat ROI of 5.79%, uh, and then that only improved to th negative 3.66% with uh, the Kelly staking. So look, I think this is something we could probably definitely have a look at and see where we can improve here. But um, yeah, overall 5,000 trades, I think it would be maybe interesting to look at overall, like throughout the years, to see how we perform on Rugby Union, uh, which from memory, going through my own big data tool analysis, I think it was um, pretty healthy. So, but yeah, best, definitely something to look at. Maybe Rugby Union isn't the most profitable segment for, for trade mate sports. Definitely, it definitely uh, isn't the most profitable, as you can see from the data. But um, yeah, maybe something to look at. Non-recommended leagues, a little bit better. You can clearly see we have an edge at 1.43%, uh, which is nice. And uh, But yeah, maybe something to look at, definitely. But yeah, overall, it's been our worst sport in 2020. So interesting stuff. Rugby league, on the other hand, I mean, with these samples of 4.43 and 7.27, I literally wouldn't take any note of it all, at all, even though it says we've got a 12% ROI in uh, recommended leagues for rugby league. I don't care. I don't care how big that number is or how small it is. A sample size of 443 is just way too small. So for rugby league, I'm just going to completely ignore these results because unless it's it, unless it's over 2,000, I just think it's 
you know, it's worth ignoring. So, yeah. Sorry, Rugby League fans. 2020 saw the introduction of eSports into the software, which is the last two sports we will go through. Um, what happened is we had Dota, which I can put the results up of now. We had Dota 2, but we removed that from the software as we could only have uh, a limited number of sports in the software. So uh, we had Dota in there for a couple of months, but now it's not in there any longer. As you can see, it didn't really uh, serve us too well. We did have an edge, but it was one of those ones where um, where Kelly didn't really work out for us. But if we'd have a flat staking system, it would have. Um, but yeah, huge, you know, decent closing edges, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not so much point in going into the Dota 2 results because we don't even have it in the software anymore. So let's move on to CSGO Counter-Strike. Um, you know, arguably our best, well, definitely was our best sport for 2020. Huge sample size of 40,000 bets um, and a lovely flat ROI of 9.5%, which shows that you clearly have an edge unfortunately kelly didn't didn't serve us as well as flat basically an eight percent roi there um but yeah overall csgo is the way to go it seems it's uh, it's a lovely little little profitable segment there for customers the only problem as you can imagine is limitations so uh, i myself and speaking to a few other trade mate customers it seems that the, you know you place a few bets on there and you win big you're most likely to get limited and you'll get some huge closing edges there too so that's an easy way to alert bookmakers that you're a you're a shrewd better so i think overall for myself depending on how much you value your accounts how many accounts you have access to it's something that i i personally stay away from but you know speaking to other people like neil shah who you know does a monthly video on our youtube channel pro sports better he he says that the edges are just too big for him to give up on so or to surpass so um yeah it's a decision you'll have to make yourself but you know it's hard to go it's hard to ignore betting on esports when it's a you know 7.2 percent roi and that's all for my video on our 2020 results i just wanted to quickly say a huge thank you to all our customers and users that stuck with us through COVID. It was a, it's a crazy period and it's obviously COVID still going, um, but you know, there was that period midway through the year, starting in about March, that was uh, a bit hairy for everyone and there weren't any sports being played. So that hugely impacts what we do here. But um, yeah, there was a really loyal following from everyone and some people stuck around and it really means a lot to us. And um, yeah, any, any other like data videos you want us to put out, I'm more than happy to. Just let us know if there's any other key data points that you want us to include in the future. But I hope everyone has a good 2021, a bit better than 2020, and we can go back to a bit more normality. And yeah, we can keep uh, yeah, pumping out some videos for you guys. And uh, yeah, if you haven't started Trade Mate yet, go and start a free week trial. You don't need any credit cards or anything like that, any cards at all. Just go and start a free week trial, see what you think. And uh, hopefully you can be, uh, be a part of our community going forward. Um, but yeah. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video if you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, enjoy the videos coming forward. Cheers, guys.